Hello friends, welcome to revision series. Today we are going to start chapter number 6 that is the staffing. The foundation of any organization is a talented and hard working people. After planning and organizing, provision for appropriate human resources is a very important for the organization's success. Let's see the meaning in one line. Staffing means putting people to job. In other words, it is concerned with obtaining, utilizing, maintaining and satisfactory and satisfied workforce. It includes daily measures, consultants and contract employees. It includes functions like recruitment, selection, training, development, promotion, compensation and performance appraisal. Staffing becomes very important function because of rapid advancement of technology, increasing size of organization and complicated behavior of humans. So for the successful journey, all positions in the organization structure should be filled with the right kind of people. Now let's see benefits or importance of staffing. First is it is helping in discovering qualified candidate for the jobs. There will be a higher performance because right person is working at right job. It ensures continuous survival and growth of enterprise. Optimum utilization of human resources is possible because overstaffing and understaffing both is harmful for the organization. Next is it improves job satisfaction and morale through giving fair reward for their contribution and objective assessment for their work. Next is staffing as a part of human resource management. Staffing is a generic function of management. Staffing is a function of all managers. But as the organization grow, a separate department is formed called human resource management department, which includes many specialized activities and duties like carrying out recruitment, preparing job description for various job positions by analyzing each job, formulating compensation and incentive plans, conducting training and development program for development and growth of employees, ensuring healthy relationship with them, dealing with grievances and complaints of employee, creating provision for social security and welfare of employees, defending company in lawsuits and avoiding legal complications in the organization. Next is a staffing process. Finding right person for right job is not easy task. Requirement of manpower arises due to retirement, transfer, promotion, somebody is fired, somebody quits, expanding business, starting new business. Staffing function needs to follow some steps like estimating manpower requirement, recruitment, selection, placement and orientation, training and development, performance appraisal, promotion and career planning and compensation. First is estimating manpower requirements. This is the first step of staffing. According to organization structure, how many and what type of manpower is required is estimated first, for which workload analysis and workforce analysis is done. Workload analysis decides number and type of human resources necessary in the organization to achieve the goals and workforce analysis is reveals number and type of available human resource in the organization. By this analysis, organization can avoid the problem of overstaffing and understaffing situation. In overstaffing situation, organization can transfer or remove the staff. In understaffing situation, organization can recruit the new candidates in the organization. Second is the recruitment. It is a process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for the jobs in the organization. It is done with the help of advertisement in print media and electronic media like newspaper, television and websites. Internal and external sources are there for the recruitment process. Next is the selection. It is a process of selecting best candidate among the available. Hard selection process gives two benefits. It ensures to get best candidate from the available. Next is it also enhances the self-esteem and prestige of selected candidate. At this stage, lots of tests and interviews are conducted and employment contract is also offered to selected candidate. Next is placement and orientation. Placement means employee occupying the position for which he has been selected. Orientation means introducing the selected candidate to other employees and familiarizing him or her with the rules and policies of organization. It is very crucial and may have a lasting impact on selected candidates. Next is a training and development. Everyone must have the opportunity to rise to top and it is provided by facilitating regular training to employees which ensures continuous learning of employees. Training may be arranged either inside the organization or outside the organization. It motivates people to learn 
and increase their competencies even it attracts the new candidates and also helps in retaining the talented people in the organization next is performance appraisal after training employees work on the job for some time afterwards there is a need to evaluate their performance performance appraisal means evaluating an employee's current or past performance against the predetermined standards superiors provides feedback about the performance of employees performance appraisal includes defining the job well appraising performance and providing feedback about the employees to superior next is promotion and career planning it is very important for all organization to address career related issues and make promotional avenue for their employees so managers need to design activities for the long term interest of employees promotion is a integral part of a people's career promotion means more money more responsibility more power and job satisfaction in the organization Last one is compensation it means all forms of pay or rewards going to employees it includes direct financial payments like wages salary incentive commission bonus there are two types of direct financial payments time based and performance based time based means it is based on time how much you are spending in the organization and performance based means how much you are performing how much production you are giving to organization Another is indirect payments like employer paid of insurance or public provident fund or vacations etc while deciding the compensation organization has to follow the laws of the country and union policy next topic is recruitment it is a process of searching for prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for the job in organization for that advertisement is given in newspaper television and websites recruitment includes identification of sources of manpower assessment of each sources carefully choosing the most suitable source for organization and inviting the applications from the prospective candidates for vacancies There are two types of sources of recruitment internal and external let's see the first one internal internal sources includes transfer and promotion let's see the transfer first it means shifting of an employee from one job to another job without changing responsibility and status of employee it is horizontal movement of employee it is also helpful in avoiding the problem of termination and removing individual from the organization next is a promotion it means shifting of an employee to higher position which means higher pay higher responsibility and higher status of it is a vertical shift of an employee let's see the merits of internal sources to get the promotion employees are motivated to improve their performance promotion pay simplifies the process of selection and placement because the candidates are already working in the organization and they can be evaluated more accurately and economically this is a more reliable way of recruitment transfer is used for training the employee to prepare them for higher post in the organization in internal source there is a no need of induction training it is also helpful in shifting the workforce from the surplus department to shortage department it is a cheaper in comparison to external source let's see the limitations of recruitment by the internal sources it reduces the scope of induction of fresh talent in the organization it stops the infusion of new blood in the organization many times employees are become lazy because they are sure about the time bound promotion a new enterprise cannot use internal source for recruitment it is also hampering the competition spirit among the employees frequent transfer of the employees may reduce the productivity of the organization now let's see the external sources all the vacancies cannot be filled through internal recruitment due to insufficiency or employees are not fit for the job external sources provide wider choice and brings new blood in organization let's see the resources direct recruitment casual callers advertisement employment exchange placement agency and management consultancy campus recruitment recommendation of employees labor contractor and web publishing now first one is direct recruitment under this a notice is placed on a notice board of the enterprise specifying the details of the jobs available in this selection is done on the spot it is the best way of recruitment for the semi skilled and unskilled jobs which 
are known as the buddly workers specifically when the, there is a rush of work is there in the organization or permanent staff is absent at that time direct recruitment is best next is a call casual callers many reputed business organizations keeps a database of unsolicited applications in their offices it is a valuable source of manpower and used to fill the vacancies in the future it reduces the cost of recruitment in comparison to other sources next is advertisement advertisement in newspaper television and magazines professional and journal professional and trade journals it is used mostly for the senior position in organization where wider choice is required but it brings a flood of response from unsuitable candidates also many times next is employment exchange it is run by government and best source of recruitment for unskilled and skilled operative jobs in some cases it is compulsory for the organization to give notification of vacancies to employment exchange it is serving as a link between job seeker and employers but unfortunately many times the records of employment exchange are not updated Next is a placement agencies and management consultancies placement agencies provide nationwide services these agencies have a compiled bio data of large number of professionally and technically qualified candidates they charge fees for their services many times they approach to top executives of other companies on behalf of company management consultancy help organization to fill the technical professional and management positions in the organization they are specialized in middle and top level executive placement they maintain data of candidates with different qualification and skills even giving advertise the jobs on behalf of their clients next is a campus recruitment here recruitment is done from the educational institutions it is a very popular source of a technical professional and managerial jobs many big organizations are linked with university vocational school and management institution for the recruitment this is called campus recruitment Next one is recommendations of employees. Here candidates are introduced by present employees. It is a good source of recruitment because they knows companies and candidate both. Next is a labor contractor. Labor contractors maintain close contact with laborers. They are able to provide required number of unskilled workers at a short notice, but there is one problem when the contractor leaves the organization all workers also follow the same. Last one is web publishing. Internet is become very common source of recruitment these days. Many websites are dedicated for the recruitment like nokri.com, jobstreet.com, monster.com and indeed.com. It provides information about job seekers and employers both. Now let's see merits of external sources. External sources attracts qualified and trained people to apply in organization. External sources gives wider choice because when vacancies are advertised, large number of people are applying from outside. External recruitment brings new blood in organization. It increases competitive spirit among existing staffs to show better performance to compete with outsiders. Now let's see limitations. It leads to dissatisfaction and frustration among existing employee because their chances of promotion are reduced recruitment from external sources is a lengthy process as well as costly process because lots of money is spent on advertisement and processing of applications next topic is selection selection is the process of identifying and choosing the best person out of a number of prospective candidates for a job different type of test and interviews are conducted for it at every stage many are eliminated and few move to next stage until the right type is found let's see the steps involved in selection process first is a preliminary screening selection test employment interview reference and background check selection decision medical examination job offer and contract of employment first is preliminary screening preliminary screening help to eliminate unfit and unqualified candidates for job preliminary interview help in rejecting misfit candidate for reason which did not appear in application form it may be conducted on telephone many times Next is a selection test. Test is a conducted to measure certain characteristics of individual. It may be in form of pen pencil test or exercise. First is a intelligence test. 
it is a one of the more important psychological test which measures the iq of candidate it is an indicator of learning ability and ability to take decision next is aptitude test it measures individuals potential for learning new skills it indicates person's capacity to develop next one is personality test it gives information about overall personality it gives clues of person's emotion reaction maturity and value system next is a trade test it measures existing skill of individual it measures level of knowledge and proficiency difference between aptitude test and trade test is that aptitude test measures potential to acquire skills and trade test measures actual skills possessed by individual last one is interest test it is used to know pattern of interest of individuals next step is employment interview it is a formal conversation between employer and candidate conducted to evaluate applicant suitability for the job here candidate also seeks information from the interviewer next step is reference and background check many times employer requesting to provide names address and contact number of references for the purpose of verifying information and gaining additional information about an applicant reference may be previous employer teacher or professor etc next step is selection decision after passing previous stages the final decision has to be made from available candidates here the concern manager is responsible for the performance of new employee next step is medical examination before job offer candidate is required to undergo a medical fitness test job offer is given to those candidates who is being declared fit after medical examination next step is job offer it is a next step of selection process here job is offered through letter of appointment it contains the date of joining duty the appointee must give a reasonable time for the reporting last step is contract of employment job offer is accepted by candidate and certain documents need to be executed by employer and candidate like attestation form it contains detail about candidate and attested by the candidate himself another document is contract of employment which includes all the things about the job like job title duties responsibility pay and allowances leave rules sickness rules work rules termination of employment grievances procedure etc Next topic is training and development training is a process of increasing skill and ability of an employee to perform specific job it is a process of learning new skill and application of knowledge and prepare them for any other job development development is providing learning opportunities that promotes growth of individual in all respect it is a process of developing job performance and personality and employee realize their potential capacity so they become a not only good employee but also good human beings now let's see education education is a broader concept than training it is a process of increasing knowledge and understanding of employees it develops logical and rational mind character and also develops capacity of analysis now let us compare training and development training is a process of increasing knowledge and skill development is a process of learning and growth training enable employee to do job better development enable overall growth of employee training is a job oriented process and development is career oriented process training and development help both organization as well as employee let's see the benefits to the organization first training is a systematic learning which leads to reduce the waste of efforts and money it enhances employees productivity both in terms of quality and quantity leading to higher profits to the organization it prepares future managers to take higher position it increases employees morale and reduces absenteeism and employee turnover it helps in obtaining effective response to fast changing business environment Let's see benefits to employee training improves skill and knowledge and it leads to better career of the individual it increases performance to earn more it makes employee more efficient which reduces the chance of accidents training increases job satisfaction also Now next topic is training methods there are two training methods on the job training method and off the job training method in on the job training method employee is learning while doing at workplace in off the job training method employee gets training away from workplace means learning before doing 
Now first one is on the job method it includes apprenticeship program internship coaching job rotation first one is apprenticeship program under this the trainee put under the guidance of a master worker it is required for a skill jobs like plumber electrician iron workers etc here trainee spend prescribed amount of time period with master worker Next is internship it is a joint training program of educational institutions and business firms students are getting theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge both students are working in some office or factory to acquire practical knowledge and skill next is op job method in which includes vestibule training films case study classroom lecture computer modeling and program instruction first is a vestibule training in this method actual work environment is created in classroom for training employees are using same material and equipments it is required to handle sophisticated machinery and equipment